Let's look at configuring basic single area OSPF for IPv6 networks. We'll jump right in and we have a network configured with IPv6 addresses already. We just don't have any routing protocol. So I can jump in here and take a look. I can do show IP actually go into my privilege mode and do show IPv6 route. And I can see that there are no IPv6 routes that I've learned through a routing protocol. And I want to configure a routing protocol in place. So I'm going to do OSPF. And the way you do that is you first go into global configuration mode and you make sure your IPv6 unicast routing is on. Because if you don't have IPv6 unicast routing on, then you are unable to send packets through your router, which makes the router kind of useless. All right, that's on. Now I do IPv6 router OSPF and I give a process number. The process number can be any number you want. However, you have to make sure you remember the process number when you assign interfaces to that process. So keep that in mind. I also need a router ID number. So router ID and I'll do 1.1.1.1. Normally, you'll use IP addresses. If you have IPv4 addresses assigned to any interfaces, if you don't have that, you really do need to have a router ID set. Now, this router is connected to three different interfaces. There is the one going to the internet, one going to an internal switch, and then one going out to another router. The one going to the other router is going to exchange OSPF information. The other two don't need it, and if they do have it, it cause a potential security vulnerability. So I'm going to set those interfaces as passive. So passive G, interface G00 and G02. Also, sometimes you get in situations where you have lines that are faster than 100 megabit. I mean, it's kind of common now, but the protocol was originally designed for well, 100 megabit being the fastest, the cost for 100 megabit is set pretty low. And everything above that, faster than that, like 1 gigabit or 10 gigabit, has the same cost. We don't want that to be the same, so we're going to change the auto cost reference bandwidth to 10,000, which means that we assume 10 gigabit is the fastest. We want to make sure we do that for all of our routers. Okay, at this point, the routing protocol is up and running, but there are no interfaces connected to that protocol. So I'm going to go into the interfaces, G0 slash 0, and I'm going to assign them to, I'll assign them to the right protocol. So I do IPv6 OSPF. I pick my process number, which is 10, and then area 0. So you want everything to be in area 0. All right, now once this is taken care of, you are ready to um, enable the interface. BV6 enable. Um, not really sure why you need that. It seems like it should work just fine, but sometimes it doesn't really work without that. So we do it for all of our interfaces. And now it's ready to go. So I jump over to my next router over here and I configure it as well. So this router has two interfaces, G00 and 01. And I'm going to make sure I turn on my global unicast routing for IPv6. So IPv6 unicast routing. This makes it so I can pass it through again. again. IPv6 router OSPF. And I do my process number. And once I have this in here, I need to make sure I have a router ID. It doesn't have the same process number, but it has to be a, a different router ID. So router ID. And I'll do 2.2.2.2. Now I need to, once again, make sure I have that same reference bandwidth thing. So I do auto cost reference bandwidth 10,000. So they are consistent. And also you can see that the G0 slash 1 goes to my LAN and I don't really want my OSPF going down there. So I'll do passive interface G0 slash 1. Ideally, you'd also turn off 
or make all the other interfaces that are not on or not connected also passive. So if you have any serials, you want to make them passive, anything else, make them passive just in case you later activate them. Now I'm going to go in and activate my interfaces. So I do hit G0 slash 0. I need to make sure I assign it to the correct OSPF, IPv6, OSPF process number and area 0. And I do IPv6 enable as well. Just try to make sure that things work. Now I also want to do the other interface. So I can do um, 0, 1. And I put that in area 0 as well. And I make sure I enable that one as well. I can exit out. At this point, you can see that I've already formed a relationship. And I went from my loading state all the way to the full state. And so I'm good. So I type in. I show IPv6 route, and I can see all the routes that I've learned through OSPF, as well as the other routes. You can see them right here. You can see I've learned about both those routes, and I am ready to go. And this is how you configure basic single area OSPF for IPv6 networks.